Hey everybody, so uh, quite a few of you are asking for my thoughts on the current Chris Chan situation. Uh, if you're not aware, Chris Chan somehow got bailed out of jail, and so <clears throat> that means, of course, that he will not be required to uh, return until he is um, called to stand trial. So uh, a lot of people have been concerned excuse me, about what this means and everything, and what, or have, have speculated about what this could mean. One of the big theories <clears throat> going around the interwebs, of course, has been that uh, a bunch of weens raised the money to bail him out of prison. And <clears throat> I highly doubt that was the case. One, obviously, there was a, a mention of a transportation order, so that would not have been there if somebody had just shown up and uh, carted him off. Also, I really don't think his lawyer would have been okay with uh, just anybody showing up and carting him off. I really don't think that the uh, court system is going to be that naive as to just let somebody that's a complete invalid like that just wander off with just anybody. There was a an image circulated uh, purporting to be someone called Samson Jekyll that, um, uh, you know, looked like a, maybe a shaven version of, uh, Vermin Supreme. And people were saying this is the person that Chris Chan was released to. I think that was an obvious prank. And, um, Samson Jekyll sounds like a troll name anyway. Uh, so what, you know, as, as far as, uh, also as far as Ween's raising the money to get him out of prison, I, feel like that is, um, you know, also unlikely just because I don't think they could realistically raise that much money. And I question seriously how much money people would really, truly be willing to part with for something like that. Um, a special, uh, you know, I understand people sending him, you know, 10 or $20 here and there to, you know, buy himself little toys from the commissary and stuff like that. Uh, but I really can't imagine that, you know, anyone being willing to part with that, uh, that amount of money, whatever it is, it could not have been, it would have to have been steep, whatever it was. Uh, <clears throat> but more than likely there's two, there, the more than likely the situation I would think is that he's probably been, uh, <clears throat> He's probably been uh, transported to a group home of some kind that they finally, you know, a non, uh, non prison, uh, non prison, non hospital group home for autistic people has probably had an finally had an opening, which is uh, he alluded to that being uh, what they were doing, what they were waiting on, uh, <clears throat> and uh, so it's I think it's realistic to think that that's what's happened. They're going to get him in over there. They're going to get him settled in, and they are going to then, when he goes back to court, give him a, a like a plea bargain for time served or something like that. Uh, that would be the best possible outcome. Now, <clears throat> the thing is, this is Chris Chan, and as we know, Chris, had, you know, the the Chris Chan situation is never so bad that it can't get worse. And as we learned, he was initially uh, kicked out of uh, the mental health facility and put back in jail after trying to give one of the other patients an exorcism. So <clears throat> Chris, as we know, has absolutely no ability to stay in his lane, absolutely no ability to mind his own business. However, um, he does look, I, I don't say this with any kind of relish or anything, but he does look very beaten down in his... Um, does look extremely beaten down in his most recent um, prison, his, his uh, discharge photograph that was published with the release notification. He's lost a tremendous amount of weight, um, does, does not look at all well. He's gone from looking like a defiant toddler to looking like Benjamin Franklin. Um, but anyway, so he's lost a lot of weight. One thing we do know, as others have pointed out, is that if Chris, uh, you know, if Chris has any access to the outside world at all, he will be putting up all kinds of stuff announcing what happened and everything else. So hopefully, he's gone to a group home without internet access and where 
They will, pardon me. They will be monitoring his mail for uh, stuff from the trolls and that sort of thing. Uh, so that's that's the best possible outcome, and hopefully it stays like that. I, I really do hope that it becomes a thing where Chris is just fully and completely removed from the world. I thought this was a settled issue uh, a long time ago. I really couldn't, I could never have imagined that he'd be, be released like this. Um, I think about, you know, from an artistic standpoint, so um, if you're just joining us, I did an album, a concept album called Nowhere Land that's inspired by the life of Chris Chan. Um, and uh, it's sort of, you know, t telling the story of the life of Chris Chan, uh, in you know, in the vein with music in the vein of like Pink Floyd and Alan Parsons and Genesis and um, you know that uh, that sort of thing, Bowie, Ziggy Stardust, stuff like that, the Who's Tommy. So um, I did that, and I ended it on a note of. Uh, it, it ends with Chris being put away on the assumption that this really would be the end of the Chris Chan story, uh, for all intents and purposes that, you know, the, uh, the neck, that the next, that hopefully the next thing we heard from Chris Chan would be an obituary 30 years from now or more or less or whatever, you know, that that would be the last by, by, by which time, hopefully everybody that's fascinated with him would have long since moved on with their lives. Uh, so that's what we hope for, but nevertheless, um, th that's what we hope for, but nevertheless, you know, again, it's, it's Chris. And as one person commented on my, uh, channel, uh, Chris Chan, Chris Chan's life is like when you're, uh, playing a video game and you speed run all the bad decision points just to see what happens. Um, Mitzi says hi, but the, uh, but anyway, so that's about where it is, um, and I hope, uh, I hope that wherever he goes, he goes somewhere, uh, worthwhile, uh, you know, somewhere that'll take good care of him, and hopefully somewhere where they will actually invest some time and energy and effort into, you know, figuring him out and figuring out what's going on with him. Hopefully this won't be just a, you know, a place where he's controlled with a cattle prod or something, or, you know, God forbid, or, or something like that, where I don't want it to be something where he's just treated like an animal or something like that. Uh, the, um, so hopefully he'll be treated with some, some compassion and some humanity. Now, one outstanding, uh, you know, suggestion that a few people have mentioned is, uh, on different forms have mentioned is maybe this is, maybe he's being bonded out because Barb is dying. Um, I have, again, obviously I have a limited understanding of how the jail prison system works and everything, but if I understand correctly, when you are given time off to go, uh, attend to family, time off from prison or jail to go attend to family matters like a death in the family and that sort of thing, you are not bonded out. You are given a furlough for a specific amount of time. So it's like if you have to go to a funeral, you are furloughed for you know the you know a, the the uh, the day of the funeral and that kind of thing, and um, you're allowed to leave and go attend the funeral and then immediately come back. So I don't think that they would have just straight up uh, discharged him on bond. Uh, for something like that, you know, they, surely they are not so naive as to think that they can just let him back out roaming the streets and that sort of thing. And I do, one, one speculation that I, um, you know, that I agree with is that, yeah, as soon as he was, re if he was released on his own, all he would do is make a beeline for branch land. And if he can't get in, break in and squat there, you know, I really do think that's what would happen. Um, but anyway, so I doubt that's just because of that the nature of it. I doubt that's what's happened. One thing could be that Barb is uh that Barb is dying, that she has limited time left, and that he has been he's being released to tend to her to, or to, to be with her in her final days or something like that. Even that seems un, seems very unlikely. Seems very unlikely because to do that they would have to um 
they would have to offer some kind of round-the-clock supervision of him, you know, or something like that. They would have to send an officer out there, somebody out there to monitor him uh, 24-7. So I really don't think that's very likely. I think uh, finding a good, having found a good group home is probably the best option, or probably the most likely option, which, you know, knock on wood, that's the case. Hopefully, uh, when we see the uh, the next, I know the next major court appearance is in, in August of uh, this coming August. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully that's what we hear, that it's been, you know, written off as uh, time served and he's now in a good group home and he's going to stay there. That's the best we can hope for. Uh, and, uh, I, I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this, but Gino Samuel published his, uh, what we thought was the 74th installment of the, um, of the, um, the, the, um, uh, comprehensive history video, uh, series, um, uh, a couple of days ago, and, me, uh, me and a friend who follow, both follow Chris Chan were watching it, and we were thinking, like, what is this? It ends with Chris Chan, uh, meeting a woman and marrying her, and they, and, and getting a job working at Target, and everything is happy, and get, and it turns out, uh, that and it has all of this video and all of this footage and everything, and it turns out, uh, it was, you know, I, I, I had, we were wondering about it and wondering, then I finally clicked with me that it was an April Fool's Day joke. And, um, so, you know, of course, Gino had went all out with that, like just, uh, all kinds of, you know, AI generated, uh, images of Chris to make it look like he's properly transitioned into, um, a facsimile of womanhood and that sort of thing. And so it was, um, it was really, um, uh, you know, there was a, a nice moment of levity, but, uh, we, I'm sure we'll find out very soon what's, uh, how, how Gino's going to portray the rest of that. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the current situation with Chris. Not a whole lot new to say and not a whole lot new to analyze, but I'm sure there will be more when time, uh, time allows.